Hello and welcome to the van build vlog. I must confess not a lot has been going on but I have ordered some bits, not as many as I need but a few and they have started to trickle in. For example, this is very exciting, I have a tin of WD-40 specialist degreaser leaves no residue apparently and that I will use for cleaning up the sides of the van before I start sticking any insulation or other things on and by other things I mean stuff like this which all the van builders seem to use it's a sound deadening sheet a couple of millimeters thick some sort of matting and you stick it onto the side walls of the van and the idea is that it stops the van being sort of rattly and boomy as you drive along, gives the, the sound a better, well, sound really. Now whether you really need this stuff, if, as all the van builders including me do, you then stick loads of insulation round the sides and roof and floor of the van as well, I don't know, but what, what I don't want to do is just put insulation on and then drive it and think, oh that's still a bit rattly, I wish I'd put that other stuff on. So I'll put this on anyway, it's, it, I've only spent 30 quid on it, so stick that on the walls, stick the insulation on top and then I know I've done everything I can to make it sound a little less boomy inside the van. And the other more exciting thing I've had arrive is here two side windows to go on the doors here when I've cut out appropriate panels for them. I haven't yet got the back windows, I need to go and get them hopefully today, but I've got the side ones which only arrived last night so what I'm going to do now is take them out and just check that they have arrived undamaged. Right, this is window number one of two and it's a 70% tint. The window itself apparently is tinted rather than it being a film and it's just a window, nothing else. The other one has a little slidey opening vent on it, hopefully, that's what I ordered, but what I just want to do is check they've been delivered okay. This is faintly nerve-wracking because it's quite a large chunk of glass. Come on, out of the packet. There we go. Right. <laughs> That's the inside, and a little pattern on it, yes, and the marking there. Actually, let me just hold this up to you. It's going to blow off, isn't it? Ah, blooming thing. Oh, and the tape. Right, this is all a bit uncoordinated. There we go. Now then, that should look dark from that side. And I can see out. Yeah, quite happily, from that side. Whoa, don't drop it, you idiot. Don't drop it. Oh. Have a look at it that way. Mm. Yeah, not quite as dark as perhaps I'd have wanted, but it's better than having no tint at all. Don't want people peeking into my camper while I'm snoozing. I'll have curtains on the inside as well, of course. So, what I really want to do is just have a peer at this. Slightly curved, which is why I've got to be a little bit careful. I don't want to lean on it and crack it. And then the back edge here has got a textured finish to it which presumably is for adhesion of the glue because all you do is you put this gungy stuff around the edge and hold it up to the hole you've cut in the van and after about 30 minutes it's dry and stuck on apparently and then you can't drive the van for a couple of hours. Right, that one looks alright. Now I need to get, get it back in its plastic. That could be fun. I tell you what, trying to actually put these windows on the van solo is going to be fun. I might actually have to ask someone to help me. And that would never do. 
Good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon, Mark. I suppose I also ought to hold it up against the van to check it's the right size. That's not a bad idea. Now then, hang on, that'll go around the other way. And that will go on. We're lucky. Like that. Yes, that looks about right, doesn't it? About right. The famous last words of the DIY enthusiast. That looks about right. I've spared you the pain of me getting this one out of its packaging. And uh, it's clearly a more sophisticated product, as you can see with the slidey window. So this section will slide that way on these rails. This cap seems to hold it in place so that ne'er-do-wells can't come into your van from outside. Although, how you lift that up to actually move it is not apparent. Oh, it goes upwards. Ah, oh, OK. I'm being stupid. You push that up and it lifts it out of a notch. And if we're lucky, yes, look at that. And then that goes back into another notch there. Well, well, and we have an opening window. So, quick check over, make sure it's all right. Petrified of breaking these, which is silly, because, I mean, obviously they can be replaced. It wouldn't be good, but they could. But, um, better to be careful, isn't it? He said, stating the obvious. That's what I'm here for. Obvious van tips. Not the best quality control out the factory because there's loads of glue around this frame that just needs a little gentle scraping off. And I think actually that bit needs repainting. Not terrific, but probably, probably not worth the hassle of trying to send it back because that is always a hassle. I'm sure they'll agree and say, yes, we'll send another one, but you've got to mess about, haven't you? So I think a little bit of cleaning on that will do the trick and a tiny bit of black hammerite will do the trick on that. Otherwise, it looks all right. Good. I'll quickly show you the fitting kit these come with, starting with this stuff, which is edge trim. Once you've cut your hole in the van, you bang this stuff on the edge once you've filed it down and painted it, and that forms the trim edge of the window. They were supposed to send me six metres of this, and they've sent me one metre but supposedly the rest is coming today. And then here is the actual bonding stuff. You get a little wipe to clean your glass, make sure it's good adhesion, some gloves, two tubes of this super stick adhesive stuff, and also a little primer that you have to put around the windows with these little paintbrushy things. It's all quite technical, but it's all designed to ensure that the windows do bond in correctly and won't come bouncing out of your van as you go hurtling down the M1. So that's okay. The obvious thing to do now, of course, would be to fit those windows, but there is a teensy weensy little snag, and that is the weather. It is, looking out of the window here today, absolutely glorious outside. Blue skies, sunshine, but it's positively arctic. The high temperature this week is no more than about five degrees Celsius, which coincidentally is the minimum temperature that the adhesive you use to bond the windows needs in order to work. And I would like it to be a little bit warmer than that as well, say around, let's say, 10 degrees. Perhaps I'm being optimistic for winter, but we had mild weather a week ago. I'm hoping it might just briefly come back for a few days. Or I'm idly on the lookout for a small workshop or wide double width garage I could rent so I've got enough space to work around the van just for a day or so, a couple of days, so that I can get the windows installed. But until that, there will be no progress on installing the windows, or for that matter, probably for installing the insulation, which also is stuck onto the walls with adhesives. And I do think the temperature needs to be a little bit higher. I could put a heater inside the van to warm the inside up for doing the insulation, but doing the windows, I just think the ambient air temperature needs to be a bit higher. In the meantime, then, my attention has turned to that other most thrilling aspect of camper van conversion, paperwork and administration. You see, the van at the moment is 
a panel van. That's its official classification with the DVLA, which for my overseas viewers is the government organisation that looks after motor vehicles. And that means it's got a couple of slight differences to a car. A couple of the speed limits are slightly different. It is still in the same MOT classification, class four as a car. And again, for overseas viewers, the MOT is an annual mm, safety check, I suppose you'd call it, on a vehicle, which it has to have once it's three years old or older. Uh, but there are benefits to getting the van's classification changed from van to motor caravan. And in order to do that, you have to fulfill a list of criteria that the DVLA have set out. None of it is too arduous, but it includes things like having a bed of a certain length in the van. You have to have cooking facilities, something like two gas hobs or a microwave. There has to be a sink, there has to be a table, and it can't just be a removable table, it has to be a fixed table that's part of the van, and so on. It's nothing too arduous, and it's all things that I was going to put into the van anyway. And look, I've been drawing up some plans, quite literally, on the front of an envelope and working out various designs. Where do I want to put the cooker? Where's the bed going to be? How long's the bed going to be? And so on. And once you fulfill that list of criteria, you can apply to the DVLA to have the van re-registered as a motor caravan, as they call it. And then all the speed limits go back to the normal ones that you have for a car. But additionally, and most crucially, the van will cost less to insure. You see, when I bought it, in order to drive it away from the dealer, I just phoned up the normal insurance companies and bought van insurance. And it cost me, wait for it, 500 pounds, bearing in mind that you can't use no claims bonus earned on a car on a van because apparently it's different no claims. You, the fact that you're a safe driver in a car seems to have no bearing on you driving your van, although there are some insurers who will sort of unofficially take it into account. But anyway, by the by, cost me a load of money to insure it as a van. If I can insure the van as a camper van, which I have now done, that halves. So it's definitely worth insuring your van, if it's going to be a camper, as a camper. Now you may be saying, hang on a minute, how have you insured it as a camper van when it's still not a camper van? Well, there are some insurance companies out there specialising in campers who will let you register it, sorry, insure it as a camper in advance providing you are definitely going to do the conversion. So the one I'm with has given me 180 days to do the conversion and they want photographic evidence. I have just sent them some photos of the van as it is. And then after 90 days, I have to send them a progress update and it has to be not only finished, but re-registered after 180 days. And the good thing is that means it will give me an incentive to get on with it as well as getting lower insurance. That, I think, is enough for this vlog, because I've been waffling on a bit. The next one, well, in an ideal world, it would be me putting the windows in, but that is temperature dependent, so I think we will just have to see how things go. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.